Hi, I'm Willie Howe. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And if you uh, don't want to hear me talk about soft skills, go ahead and tune out of this video now because that is what this entire video is going to be about. Today is something a little different. There is uh, Today's video is not technical in nature, but it is something that I believe is very important to professional development and to um, interacting with other human beings. And I will even tell you that I struggle with some of these things, and so I am working on making these changes. So I've got a laundry list of uh, soft skills here that I want to talk about, and they're in no particular order, so it's going to bounce around a little bit. And it might be kind of ranty, but... You know, uh, thanks for sticking around, and, and let's see how this rolls. <clears throat> so I've been kicking this one around uh, for a while, and there's a lot of uh, Google articles out there. Just Google, uh, stop saying sorry. And I have tried to implement this, and it's not that you're just being um, mean or cold or cruel and you're not saying sorry, but you are only saying sorry when you directly cause an issue or something that you personally control causes the issue. Here's a good example. A company has a, a policy that, you know, once the weather hits 32 degrees, that they don't allow people in a certain area of a field or something like that. Now, this might be a weak example, but follow me with where I'm going. So the company has this policy that you can't be in a certain field once it hits 32 degrees. Well, it hits 30 degrees and a customer comes in and they want to be on this field. You don't need to apologize for the weather, but a lot of people will start out with saying, I'm sorry, it's 30 degrees, the policy says. Don't apologize because you have not caused this. The company policy says at 32 degrees, people cannot be on this field. So don't apologize for that because it cheapens the apology. That's the first thing. It means it, 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 we are degrading what an apology actually means by, by doing this. And you didn't cause it, right? You can't control the weather. You know, you don't have your fighter jets seeding the clouds. That poorly timed joke, but, but you don't control the weather. So don't apologize for that. Now, if you screw up, so this is the other side of the coin, be able to take ownership and apologize for that, learn from that mistake and move on. I will tell you that I, I make mistakes, but I learn from my mistakes, I learn quickly, and then I usually don't repeat the same mistake. Let's talk about customer service a little bit. Now, I, I don't toot my own whistle, but I will tell you that if you've worked with me in any capacity, you understand that I have a, a servant heart and that I want to make sure that my customer service is the best. And I believe that my customer service is very good and that is, it's important. And there are several things that, that go into that. And one of the first things that is important is being an active listener. So actually listening to what people have to say, sometimes even stop and repeat it back. So somebody will tell you something, they get to the end, say, okay, I, I, I heard you, but I want to repeat this to you or I want to, you know, roll this back to you and make sure that I understand what you're saying. And I will, I will do that so that if, if I'm talking to someone, they have a request, I want to make sure that I understand what the request is or what the task is, things like that. So feel free to ask someone, is this what you meant? Because sometimes when people say things, it's not, it's not exactly what they mean. And you want to make sure that, that you are performing the task that is, is asked. If you are not working over the phone, but if you're face-to-face, -face, do simple things like look people in the eyes, be engaging, smile. This is the first thing that people see. You know, if someone wants to shake your hand, shake their hand. You know, you don't have to be cold and, and not um, available in the moment. And that is something that I always try to do is I try to lock eyes with people. I try to say hello. And leading into that is when we talk to people, these questions that we ask, and I am guilty of this and I'm, I'm trying to change this. But when, when someone, when you, when you're greeting someone, how are you? That is a very open ended question. It, you know, and, and sometimes when people say that, it's just something that we've been brought up with. This is how you be engaging. This is how you be kind. You know, ask somebody how they are. They probably really don't care how we are. 
but it's something that we're trained to do is, you know, and, and so every day this still happens to me. How are you? Oh, great. How are you? So I'm trying to change to ask questions that are more, more on spot to still be engaging, like great weather we're having, right? You know, change those, those conversations up to something that's a little bit more on point, something that's a little bit more engaging where the person really feels, and, and it's not just giving them a feeling, but I really, you know, tell me your opinion about the weather. That, that is something that we have in common, just like that right there. I don't know what struggles you're going through. And so if I open that up, I'm, it, it, who knows where it's going to end. So that's something that I'm working on actively trying to change that. And it could be, I mean, you could, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of like five to 10 different questions that are not this open-ended. How are you? Uh, that are very pointed and keep it, keep it rolling. So I'm going to start that list and I'll probably do a follow-up video. When, once I have a more concise list, the weather example, that's the one that I'm, that I'm trying to use. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Another thing is you have to know when to say no, and you have to know when you've hit your, your limit, uh, your skills, whether it is skills as a manager and dealing with people and you need to escalate that then to your manager or your supervisor, or whether you've hit your technical skill set and you need to reach out. So you need to know when to say no. Don't take on things that you know you can't do that are going to end poorly because I will tell you years ago, I would say, I would say yes to a lot of things. And now after having some experience and dealing with other people and watching other people say yes to everything and then the struggles that they go through, know when to say no. Don't just outright say no. I mean, you're going to use the word no. So, so don't take it that way. But then offer alternatives. You know, no, I can't help you with this, but I can get you to someone who can. No, I can't do that. But let's look and see if we can find somebody who can help you. It's okay to say no. You can't be everything to everyone. You, you just can't. Another thing that you should have when you're working with people, when we're working, especially, and I think in technology as a field that is so broad, technology is so big, there's no excuse also for not knowing everything because technology is so big, but we need to be able to empathize. And it's not just in IT, it's, there are all kinds of occupations where we need to be able to empathize with people, put ourselves in those shoes. You don't know what someone's going through, you know, so be able to, to empathize uh, be kind, things like that. Learn some some empathy and go out and there's all kinds of YouTube videos that talk about empathy um, and how to deal with that. So that. That's something else. But another thing that we need to do is we need to understand how to keep our composure. You will be challenged in life, no matter whether it's in your career or in your personal life, you are going to be challenged. And you need to be able to keep your composure, keep a calm, cool, level head when you're dealing with situations. If you can't do that, you need to learn how to walk away for a minute, but you need to learn how to politely walk away. Excuse me, I just need a couple minutes. Keep your composure. Do, do not berate people. Like I said, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know their story. Keep your composure. as long as you, And if you can't keep your composure, you need to be able to lean on somebody or something that helps you keep your composure is very important to stay composed, keep a cool level head, especially in when you're dealing with security, you have to be able to keep a level head. You ha you know, you can't um, set your hair on fire and run down the hallway all the time. And then I think I already said, don't be afraid to say, I don't know. I would rather work around 20 people that know how to say, I don't know, and but then help me find a path to get where I'm going than a hundred people who tell me they do know and they don't know. And then we end up with a bigger problem. You will often hear me say, I don't know, but I can find out or uh, let me, let me do some research on this. You're not always going to have the answers directly and you shouldn't pretend like you do. If you don't, like I said, it, it is this big. And what most of us know is this big. So it takes a lot of us as, at this big to fill in this, this big gap. And there, I make no excuses. You know, there are things that I don't know, but I, I know what I'm charged with doing, um, on the daily. And so that's what I deal with and everything else. So like I, I, I tell people, can I hack code together? Can I make code work? Sure I can, 
it's not going to be the best end result and I'll do it if I have to, but I would rather take that and give it to someone who that's their specialty and let them figure it out. And because they're going to be able to ask questions that I don't know. And, you know, so don't be afraid to say, I don't know. So I, I hope you'll think about some of these things and I hope you like this video. So I'm going to call this, this video by the time you see it, it'll be called pro tips, soft skills. If you like this, these are just things I picked up over the years. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you want to reach out, go to willyhow.com. Fill out that form. Someone will get in touch with you as soon as possible. If we don't know the answers, we'll get you to someone who does. As always, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Discord links are down below. Patreon links. Thank you to those folks who are patrons. And if you want to become a patron, you can sign up below. And the Amazon affiliate links are down below. They don't change your price, but they kick a couple bucks to the channel. So I want to thank you again for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.